Hi, my name is Stuart Lynch. This is the final video in a seven part series on building a full weather app using WeatherKit. In this video, we'll persist our list of cities to the device by creating an extension to file manager and adding some functions that will encode and decode our list of cities to write or read the list as JSON and have it stored in the app's documents directory. In addition, we'll top the app off by giving it a unique launch screen and custom icon. I love getting your feedback, so tap the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and leave a comment below. Make sure you subscribe to the video and ring that bell to get notifications of new videos. And if you want to support my work, you can buy me a coffee. If you're working along with me, you can continue on from the source code that you completed in the last video. However, if you're just jumping in here and you want to work along, you can download the completed project from that last video. Just make sure you download the branch from video 6. I've already started a branch now for this video and the completed source code for this video will be in that branch and that will be the completed project. Links to both branches are in the description. Remember you'll need a developer account and you'll have to change the bundle ID to your own to make sure that WeatherKit is enabled on both the capabilities and the app services tab for the app identifier for MyWeather. So now in this final video we need to persist our cities to disk so that we can get the same list back every time we launch the application. The solution I've decided on is to store the array of cities as a JSON string to the documents directory. So whenever I update or delete a city, I'll just encode the array and save it back to the documents folder. When the app launches and I create my instance of the data store service class and call the load cities function, and I'm not using the preview option, I want to find and open that file if it exists, and decode the string and populate the cities array. Well, since the array will always be kept in memory, the load and save options won't be overused. So in the extensions folder, create a new file and call it file manager plus extension. Inside, create an extension to file manager. Start by creating two static properties, one for file name, which will be a string, and specify the string cities.json, as this will be the name of the stored JSON file that will include our string of cities. The second will specify the storage URL location, and it will be in the documents directory, so we can simply use url.documents directory and then append the path component of the file name conforming to JSON. Next, we'll create three functions, one to check and see if the file already exists, which will return a Boolean value, one to save, and one to read. So first, the function for file exists. This will return a bool. Then all we have to return is the result of calling the file manager's function file exists at path and pass in that storage URL path. The next function will be read file, and it's going to read and return a data object. Now this may fail, so make it throw an error. Create a do catch block in the body, and then within the do, we can return the result of trying to generate the data from the contents of the storage URL. And if it fails, we'll catch and throw the error. The final function is one that we need to encode the JSON string back to the storage URL. So we'll need a function called save file that will have a single parameter for the contents, and that will be a string. And this function too may fail, so we can throw an error here as well. Again, we'll create a do catch block. And then within the do catch block, we'll try to use the contents of the URL to write to the storage URL, setting atomically to true, and encoding to UTF-8. And then in the catch block, we'll just throw the error. 
Well, we can return to our data store service class now and check to see if the file exists and then call the read file function to get the data from it. So first, let me create an instance of the file manager as a variable. And then within the else block, we'll check to see if file manager file exists. And then we'll create a do catch block and try to call the file manager's read file function. And if it was going to throw an error, we'll catch it here and print out the error's localized description. Well, if it was successful, we can try and use a JSON decoder to decode it. But this means that we'll need to make sure that whatever we decode is a codable object. And we'll want to decode it into an array of city objects. This means we have to ensure that city conforms to codable. Well, since its properties are just strings and doubles, all we have to do is say that we need it to conform to the codable protocol in the city struct. And then we can decode the cities by trying to call a JSON decoder's object decode function as an array of city type objects. So we'll specify self from the data. And as this may fail, but we're already in a do block, so the error will be caught in the catch block. So within the data store, we'll create another function called save cities. We only want to save if we're not using the preview version of the data store. Just like when we loaded, we did this check. So create an if not for previews clause. Then we need to encode, which could throw an error, and save using the throwing file managers function. So we'll need a do catch block. And then in the do block, we can let the data be the result of trying to use a JSON encoder to encode the cities. And then we can create a string version of the data using the string decoding data as utf8.self. Well, once we have that string, we can try and call the file manager's save file function, passing in the contents. That's that JSON string. Now, if either of those tries fail and we caught an error from the file manager function, we can print the error's localized description in the catch block. In cities list view, wherever you delete a city using the swipe action, you'll need to save updates. So you can simply call the stores save cities function here. And then in search overlay, when we append to the cities array, we'll do exactly the same thing. So let me test this out. I'm going to run on the simulator. When the app launches, I see I get my current weather. When I tap on the cities list view though, it's bare except for my current location. That's because I'm getting that empty array and not the preview cities. So I'm going to add some cities. So first, Chicago. Then Las Vegas. And then San Diego. Three cities that I'm going to be visiting very soon. Well, I can check the weather forecast for any of those cities. So let me quit the app and launch again. The cities are all there. Persistence works for saving. Let me delete one of them. Again, let me quit and relaunch. Yes, deletions are persisted as well. So where is the file stored and what happens if it doesn't exist or gets corrupted or deleted? In the My Weathers app file, you can add an on appear block to your forecast view. And in here, we can print out the path to the URL.documents directory where we store our file. And we'll specify the path. Let's run again. This time you see the URL printed to the console. 
this is the path. So let me raise the bar here so that you can see what I'm doing. I can select this path and then right click on it and then from the Surfaces menu choose Open and then click on Run Service. A finder window opens to the path and I get to see my cities.json file. We already know that if it does not exist, it will get created once we save our first city. The cities array which is kept in memory is just empty at first so there's no reason to save it. So let me open this file in my text editor. You see it's a JSON file. So we can corrupt it simply by modifying one of the keys, like this first one. Well, let me run again. When I open the cities list, all of the cities are gone. The console is showing the errors localized description, which is not too helpful to me. But it doesn't really matter. Let me bring back the app and create a city once more. It's been added, but has it been persisted? Well, let me run once more. Yes, it was. And there's no longer an error showing in the console. Why? Because when we save, it simply overwrites what was already there, and that was that corrupted version. You can see that we now have a valid JSON file. Well, an app's really not complete until it has a half-decent icon and a launch screen. Let's get these added to our Assets folder. I've created two assets for you that you can use, and they are available from the resources that you would have downloaded in an earlier video. I'll leave another link in the description here. There is an app store icon.png file that you can use for the icon, and there's a launch screen PNG file that we'll use for the launch screen. So with the Assets folder open, simply select the App Store icon and drag the PNG onto the App icon placeholder. And while this is open, drag the Launch screen directly into the Assets folder to create a new asset. Now I'm not a real fan of the plist version of the Launch screen, as it's unpredictable. Sometimes I get a Launch screen where the image that I might want to display is way, way too large. So I've reverted back to UI kit for my launch screens. And this means that we'll need a launch screen storyboard. So select your My Weather folder and right click and create a new file. Search for launch screen to create a launch screen storyboard and save it. When the storyboard opens, Click on the text view for My Weather, and then press the delete key to delete it. In Xcode's toolbar, click on the plus button to show the library, and select the image tab to locate the launch screen image, and then just drag it onto the storyboard canvas. Once it's on the canvas, click on the image, and then click on the alignment button on the storyboard, and add horizontally in center, and vertically in center to add those two constraints. Make sure that you reveal the inspector pane. And then if you select the image view in the image field dropdown, you'll see the name of the asset that we've selected. If you missed it or chose the wrong one, you can use this drop down menu to choose any one of the assets in your assets folder. Next, click on the background of the storyboard, and again in the File Inspector, in the Background field, select System Background Color. The final act now is to go to the Application, Target, and in the field where you can specify a launch screen, choose Launch Screen Storyboard. Let's test once more in the simulator. When the app builds, you'll see the icon on the home screen change to reflect the new icon. As the app launches, the launch screen appears with our image placed nicely in it. Great. Well, that's all, folks. I really hope you've enjoyed this series and have learned something that you can use in your own projects.
If you have enjoyed it, please give the video a thumbs up and leave me a comment. And consider subscribing to my channel and enable notifications so that you can find out when new videos are released. I try for at least one video a week, normally every Sunday. I prepare my videos well in advance of release, so if you want to stay ahead of the game and get access as soon as I finish them, consider becoming one of my monthly coffee subscribers. It's only $5 a month. No pressure though. Thanks for watching.